The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Today, the Christian calendar celebrates Good Friday. We are invited to meditate on the death of Jesus. And Good Friday is the day of the cross. Good Friday is a day to remember. Remember that Jesus died violently. Something predictable for us if we remember the readings of the Gospels. If we remember the life of Jesus. If we remember his ministry, his message, and his acting way. So, however, the death of Jesus paradoxically invites us to live. To live a life that only has meaning if we give it to the service of others through Jesus and through his message. If we remember the teacher and his teachings, Jesus went to pray with his disciples in his last hours before being arrested. From what we can understand from the reading, the place they went to pray was a familiar place for them. The Gospel of Luke tells us that it was the Mount of Olives. And we read in our text that says, Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. Because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So this place was a safe place for them. But suddenly this safe place became a place of pain and hopelessness for the disciples. So today... Let us meditate on the disciples' attitude before the death of Jesus. It is not to point out our finger on their attitudes or in the way that they did against Jesus in this time of hopelessness, but to reflect on our own attitudes toward Jesus in times of hopelessness. What do we remember about Jesus in challenging times? Let me ask the following question for our reflection. And this question says, what was occupying the mind of the disciples hours before the death of Jesus? What was occupying their minds? Were they disillusioned with what was happening? Were they shocked by the situation? What did they think? Let's compare some Bible passages from the Gospels before the time of Jesus as, as we see the time of Jesus on the Mount of Olives. First, Jesus had celebrated the Last Supper with the 12 apostles. At that moment, Jesus had explained to them that he was going to suffer. Still, Jesus also introduced a word of hope. And he says, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment 
in the kingdom of God. Jesus also reveals to them that there is one among them who is going to betray him. Jesus does not disclose the name of the one who is going to betray him. Jesus was not interested in it. However, his disciples were. But why? The disciples began an argument to discover the traitor. Why? Because when they found the one who was going to deliver Jesus, they exonerated themselves. They were not interested in reflecting on the words of their master. They were interested in discriminating between the guilty and the innocent. And not assume their own responsibility for the facts. So did they want to protect Jesus? Or to protect their own honor? The disciples cannot realize that their role at that time was not to blame each other. But this was a time to accompany Jesus on his way to the cross and not deviate from different paths. It was not their job to make Inquiry is about to remember the, but to remember the teachings that Jesus had shared with them at his last supper. And not only remember the instructions, but put them into practice at that precise moment of difficulty. The second moment is shared also in the Gospel of Luke. And this go Gospel tells us about another thing that occupied the mind of the disciples. Now let me read for you what it says. Which of them will be the greatest? Which of them will be the greatest? It was to know who was the most important, the leader, over the rest of the disciples. Jesus has to remind them that the greatest is not the one who sits at the table, but the one who serves. And he says, I am among you as one who serves. So as Jesus reminded them that he will be executed and killed, the disciples wonder who could take his place. What a lack of memory. What a lack of empathy with Jesus. The third moment that I would like to share with you is, is a moment of forgetfulness. And is found in the biblical passage. The story of the prayer time on, on the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of John doesn't give us more details. Besides the beautiful, beautiful prayer of Jesus for him, for his disciples, and for us, too. Yeah, Jesus prayed for us at that difficult moment. And he said, 
I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. However, the Gospel of Luke tells us that while Jesus was praying, you probably, probably remember that, the disciples were asleep. What a way to accompany Jesus. Sleeping is a way to flee, flying from the reality that is hostile to us. It's a way to be away from the problem. Hours before, just hours before, we see the disciples arguing among themselves. Now we find the disciples asleep. Before the examples of Jesus, we cannot allow ourselves to flee from reality by falling asleep. So where does faith meet life here? In this text, in our reality. Dear friends, today is Good Friday. The cross urges us to look beyond death and suffering. To meet face to face with the hope that death does not have the last word. What? Were the disciples and followers of Jesus thinking inside in this challenging moment? Disappointment entered their hearts of the disciples. What were their minds on? In returning. In returning to their places of origin. To what was his, their previous life? Before meeting Jesus. Those who were fishermen. To return to the nets. To the boats. Isn't that what we look for. In moments of uncertainty. In moments of hopelessness. In moments of disappointment. Returning to those places that seem safe for us. Something that we call comfort zone. That's how life is. That's how human beings are. We say we believe. We confess. We say that we are followers of Jesus Christ. But when we see Jesus on the way to trial, on the way to torture, on the way to the cross and death, we only remember Jesus' death and burial. We, all, we go back like those old disciples. We go back. We maintain the forms and confessions of faith. But we return to our place of origin and choose paths that were never traveled by Jesus. Those places where we feel out of danger. Far from the pain that divine disappointment may cause us. Many of us who call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ continue to argue about who we are and who is the greatest. We continue fighting to unmask the traitor. 
but we fell asleep at the moment of truth. We continue to affirm that Jesus was crucified for our sins, that he was killed due to his choice for the kingdom of God. We even affirm his resurrection, but in our actions, many of us are looking at the cross from far. Thinking that everything is crazy. And we return to our places of origin. Dressed in religiosity. Today, Good Friday from the cross, we are directed to remember another direction. We are called to remember the direction of the path of surrender, of illusion, of the struggle for the gospel of the kingdom of God until the last consequences. Today, Good Friday, from the cross, we can hear Jesus' seven last words. We can listen the sound of the hammer striking the nails. We can feel the sadness and desperation around us. But what is occupying our minds before the death of Jesus? What is occupying our minds before the death of Jesus? Are we accusing ourselves? Are we arguing who is the greatest? Or are we falling asleep? Maybe Good Friday. A day to remember. So, consider Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose.
Let us pray. We confess to you, our Lord and Savior, that we have betrayed and denied you, forgotten and doubted you. When our faith is tested, we wonder where you are. When we see injustice in the world, we often stand by. We turn our backs. We ignore the cries of others. We confess that again and again. We deny you and betray you with our silence. When we fail to proclaim your good news, when we fail to live out your teachings and love our neighbor as ourselves. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us to truly repent. Help us to remember your sacrifice, your love, and to know your forgiveness in the name of the one who lived, who was crucified, and who lives again, Jesus the Messiah, we pray. Amen. This is the passion of our Lord Jesus, 
as found in the Gospels. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it has happened in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as thought I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas. The high priest in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance. As far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, 
the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. And he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, and he said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to, do, to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His, his blood, blood be, be on, on us, us and, and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. 
after mocking him. They stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. After they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And then they nailed him to a cross. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. 
one of the criminals, who were hanged there, kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And he breathed his last.
at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. <laughs> 